Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, I'd like to welcome you, dear viewers, to another in our series, Understanding the Quran, in which we are looking at the interpretation of the 67th chapter of the Quran, Surah Al Mulk, that is, the Dominion. In this segment, we are beginning with the seventh verse, which begins. When they are thrown inside, they will hear the terrible drawing in of its breath as it blaze forth. Allah in this verse continues to describe the consequence of those who do not treat the stars as they are meant to be treated, as ornaments which Allah has placed in his universe, beautifying the skies, and as for guidance and for the traveler, as he explained elsewhere in the Quran, when a person is traveling in the night, they're able to determine the direction by the positions of certain stars, like the North Star. Those who take the stars as a means of predicting the future, astrology, such is those people will be assigned to hell. And those who follow them and believe in them, they will also join in general for those who may be involved in other acts which can draw one into hell, how serious it is, how fearful it is. He describes it that when they're thrown in, they can hear its breath, the drawing in of its breath, the inhaling. You know, Allah describes it, you know, the, the hellfire virtually like a creature. And um, it, he, in else, elsewhere in Surah Al-Furqan, the 25th chapter, verse 12, he says, when the hell sees them from a far place, they will hear its raging and its roaring, you know, it's inhaling and it's exhaling. They will hear it. And, and Allah is describing it in this kind of fashion, right? And um, in Surah Al-Qaf, the 50th chapter, verse 30, Allah describes the hellfire speaking. And Allah will say there, One day I will ask hell, are you full? And it will answer, is there any more? So the hellfire is described in these terms to give it, you know, an even a more fearful picture. And we shouldn't doubt that this is in fact really a creature of Allah. In fact, Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, in a hadith found in Sahih Muslim, he, which was narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, having 70,000 rains, with 70,000 angels drawing each rain. Now, the rain is usually put like on an animal, like a horse or a donkey or a camel. You pull the rain to pull the animal. So he's describing the hellfire is as a creature, a creature that breathes, it exhales, it inhales, it speaks, and it sees. It's a creature of God. You know, horrible creature, you know, whose punishment is something that none of us should feel well, you know, I can deal with it for a while, you know, because we know that certain believers who, due to certain wrongs which they've done, they may go into hell for a period of time and then be taken out. We say, well, okay, I can deal with it for a little bit. No, one should not, you know, wish that for oneself, you know, to be, become lazy or to become negligent, thinking and believing that they will eventually be taken out the hellfire. I mean, this is a very, very critical issue. We can't afford to fool around with it. We should all strive for paradise and not settle for anything less. In the eighth verse, Allah goes on to describe the hellfire, saying, <laughs> Alam 
يأتكم نذير. It almost bursts apart with fury every time a group is cast to you. Allah goes on to describe as people are thrown into the hellfire. You know, it, it bursts, it flares up. And uh, one of the scholars, Imam Thawri, he had described the, the image of what is happening here, saying that the people will be like a few peas in a large pot of boiling water, just tossed around inside of it, you know. The point is that the angels, when they come in, the angels that guard and maintain the hellfire, they will ask them, did not a warner come to you, you know? I mean, weren't you warned? This question is not really asking them to find out whether they, they had a warner or not, but it's like mocking them because everyone will have a chance to know. As Allah said, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رُسُولًا That, you know, Allah would not punish anyone until a warner, a messenger was sent to them. And the angels of the hellfire are very stern. They're not ones who people can turn to and plead for mercy, etc. They will not help them. Allah describes them, for example, in Surah Tahrim, the 66th chapter, verse 6. Over it are angels stern and severe, who disobey not the commands they receive from Allah but do whatever they are commanded. You know, they, there is no sympathy there. They are very stern and they do that job of punishing people eternally. So, for us as human beings, you know, we cannot have any hope with regards to the angels guarding the hellfire, though angels are good, essentially. They will be of no help to us. As Allah mentions in Surah Zukhruf, in the 43rd chapter, verse 77, uh, the people will call out to the main guardian, right, whose name is given there as Malik. They will cry out, O Malik, let your Lord put an end to us. He will reply, surely you will stay as you are. They will desire to die, as Allah describes those in the hellfire as neither living nor dying. They're in a state between the two. They're punished to the point where they feel that they're dead and at the point when they're almost out of existence, they come back again only to go through another set of punishment. Of course, this continual state, a person will wish for death to end it all. But as the angel Malik, the main guardian, will reply, people will have to stay as they are eternally. And the people who are thrown in the hellfire, Allah goes on to describe their response. They will say, yes, indeed, a warner did come to us, but we called him a liar and said, Allah has not revealed anything. You are indeed in great error. And the people who are thrown in the hellfire, Allah goes on to describe their response in the verse number nine. They will say, yes, indeed. Allah has not revealed anything. You are indeed in great error. In this verse, Allah speaks about their response, the response of those in hell, when the angels mock them, asking them, 
you know, didn't a warner come to you? They will say, yes, a warner did come. They will admit it. But we called him a liar and claimed that the law didn't receive, reveal anything. This addresses the, not just the disbelievers, this is addressing those who claim, yes, there is a God, but they are what they call deists. Those who claim that God created the world and left it to run on its own. So it means that those people who, prophets, who claim they were prophets of God and who brought revelation, etc., they were liars. This is what the deist is a liar. This is specifically addressing those people who recognize, yes, there is a God, but, you know, that God has nothing to do with this world. He didn't send any prophets. He didn't reveal any message. You know, everybody is on their own. Just do what you have to do. Make the best of it. You know, there is no real purpose here. It's just, you know, uh, eat, drink, and be merry. There's really no difference between that individual and the atheist. Though he claims he believes in God, what is the meaning of that belief? Uh, he will cry out for God just as the atheist cries out for God when real trials beset them. And um, we should know that uh, the Prophet ﷺ had clarified that there are in the creation those people who didn't have a chance to hear the message. And it's an important point here because this is a kind of a question that people usually raise. What about those people, the people who are insane, people who didn't, no messenger came to them or the message didn't reach them? They didn't reach puberty, you know, children who are not accountable, really. You know, what happens to them? Well, there's a particular narration which is authenticated in the Silsila al-Ahadith al sahiha you know, numbers 1434 and 2468. In it, Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, quoted him as saying, Don't you know that Allah created paradise and hell and mentally insane? Those who died in the period between the messengers and the senile, each will present his case. And they will then say, I used to send to my slaves messengers from among themselves. Today I am my own messenger to you. So enter this fire. Those who destined for hell will say, Our Lord, how can we enter it when we are supposed to escape from it? And the one destined to be happy will rush forth and jump into it without any hesitation. Allah will then say to those who refused, You would have been even more disbelieving and disobedient to my messengers and the second group will enter paradise and the first group will enter hellfire. So what happens is that for those people who didn't have a chance to get the message, they will have a mini version of the message coming for them and them having to make a choice. Those who make the right choice, obedience to God, because ultimately Islam is obedience and submission obedience. That is Islam. It is not an inherited culture. It is obedience. It is submission. Those who submit at that time, who didn't have a chance in this world to receive the message, then they will go on to paradise. Those who refuse, as Allah said, had you been in this life and lived it out as everybody else, you would have been even more disobedient than the other. The reality is that prophets were sent. Allah did communicate His will to human beings. These books of revelation that are there, although all of them have been distorted, some of them more than others, some so distorted that we can no longer recognize them. The only book of revelation which remains pure, undisturbed or undistorted is that of the Qur'an. It is the evidence for those who are seeking truth, those who want guidance, those who want to know what God's will is to human beings. The Quran is there for them to read. Allah has preserved it and it will be preserved until the last day. 
the evidence is there. The evidence is there that the Prophet came. If we accept that evidence, we have accepted the Prophet. And it's a duty for each and every one of us to read it. Those who are Muslims to read it regularly because it is guidance. In it is guidance. Allah tells us that right in the very beginning of the second chapter after saying Alif La Mim, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدَى للمتقين. It is guidance for those who fear God. It is guidance. We should take it as guidance. And guidance is no good if we take the Quran and we put it on a shelf, leave it there until Ramadan, we take it out, and then we're going to read it. This is, this is not guidance for us. Then that's just a ritual that we're doing. Every Ramadan, we take out the Quran and we read. Reading for what? Reading for blessings, people say. No. The Quran is a book of guidance. Allah tells us. Won't they reflect on the, the verses of the Quran? Or are their hearts sealed up? This is a straight challenge to us that we must reflect on the meanings of the Quran. It should be read with reflection and then it becomes a source of guidance for us. This is the warner in our lives. This is the warner that will remain until the last day. Anyone who wants to know the truth of what God had to say to human beings, their message, the Quran is there for them. And you, dear viewers, who are non-Muslims, who are watching this program, you owe it to yourselves to get a copy of the Quran in your own language, because, of course, it is in Arabic originally, but it has been translated into various languages. Get it, read it, and give yourself an honest... So that you do not be among those who, in the end, will answer the angels when they're told, wasn't a warner sent to you? Yes, a warner was sent, but we called him a liar. We said that the truth which was brought was false, that in fact, Allah did not reveal anything. This is a major lie. And this is why one of the pillars of faith, one of the pillars of Iman in Islam is belief in the books and the prophets, the books of revelation and the prophets who brought them, who were sent by God. And this is a part of faith. God's word was revealed to humankind. His will was made manifest to us. So there is guidance. We're not on our own. It isn't an issue of survival of the fittest, you know, the law of the jungle. No. There are guidelines. And the guidelines are guidelines of righteousness, calling to morality and to good. Allah goes on in the 10th verse. Uh, remorse of the disbelievers. He says, And they will say, if only we had listened or used our intelligence, we would not be among the dwellers of the blazing fire. Allah speaks about them, expresses what they say, saying if we had only used our intelligence, if we had listened or used our intelligence. Listening is the beginning, is a prerequisite for knowledge. How do you gain guide? How do you gain guidance? If somebody is telling you something, giving you useful information, but you're not listening, you're not going to benefit. So you have to listen. Listen with understandings and, and reflect. Reflect. They will regret. On that day, they will be regretting. And really, that regret is of no benefit. Regret in this life is benefit. If a person realizes, oh, I've taken the wrong course. This idea of God just creating the world and leaving it to run, you know, is an error on my part. I regret that. Let me go and correct myself. 
I finished. Thrown into hellfire, regrets are of no value. What we have to deal with is the reality now. How do we deal with religion? See, you have people who reject what they call organized religion. I believe in God, but this organized religion thing, I can't deal with it. But the reality is what? If you're not following the religion of God, then you're following your own religion. And they say, yes, yes, I am. I'm making up my own religion. I take some from here, some from there, and you know, the best. But the reality, as Allah said in the 25th chapter, verse 43, haven't you seen the one who takes his desires as his God? That's what the person is doing. Their desires become their God. They take what pleases them. What doesn't please them, they leave. But this is not religion. Religion of God, you know, covers all aspects. And it is a religion of submission. Submitting our wills to God. Meaning that we do what God commands, not just when it pleases us, but we do it consistently and systematically. With that, dear viewers, we have looked at the 10th verse and we hope that we would everyone would reflect on the implications Allah speaks about the hellfire for our own guidance it is something that we need to reflect on it's very easy for this world to become so important to us that we can't think of anything beyond it Allah reminds us of the hellfire so that we can think beyond and to beware of the consequences of not thinking beyond. We hope you will continue to follow our program, Understanding the Quran, and we bid you farewell. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.